Arist governor refused to endorse it. It's a similar story in Australia. Since 1970, there have been up to 12 inquiries or royal commissions or parliamentary inquiries into the uh, drug marijuana. And all of those inquiries have recommended decriminalisation. And yet no government has been prepared to uh, stand up and say, well, the inquiries have recommended decriminalisation. We will act on the recommendations of the inquiries. All the surveys show that over 50% of the community accept the use of marijuana. And if that is so, then what you're doing is getting a law that um, is enforcing something that the community doesn't necessarily want enforced. In Holland, the direct problem, the issue, is considered a, an issue of health and welfare. So it's not uh, for the police and the courts. One objective of our cannabis policy, if I may say so, not to prosecute people. It is illegal, but to a certain extent tolerated, which has nothing to do with a laissez-faire approach, but we didn't want to push people in the ground. The sale of marijuana is tolerated in many Dutch coffee shops. Nowadays, cannabis users have nothing to do with users using harder drugs. We have integrated uh, education on cannabis in our general health education system in schools. In America, cannabis use is, is, is many times higher than it is in, in Holland. In spite of all the, uh, 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 all the measures and all their wars and all their warning and just say no campaigns. So what is the attraction to marijuana? does carry a fantasy-inducing, thought-catalyzing quality. It allows the mind to rove and scan in a, more, a much more uh, expansive domain of information than is normally the case. I mean, if you don't smoke cannabis, you may spend your evening balancing your check account. If you do smoke cannabis, you may spend your evening contemplating the causes of the Greek Renaissance. It's a perceptual enhancer. It's like a child seeing something for the first time. There's a little bit of that excitement about the visual world. It enhances the appreciation of music and the graphic arts. I have met many people who I think have experienced uh, uh, increased in imagination and creativity uh, from experimenting with marijuana, uh, who have discovered themselves as uh, physical, sensual, sexual beings on marijuana who otherwise had not developed that part of themselves. They find that it's useful in, in uh, gaining perspective and, uh, and insight in their lives. Marijuana creates a receptive, suggestible state which could facilitate certain kinds of therapy. It often uh, increases people's access to their, uh, to their own unconscious, to the images that they have in their mind, to their dreams, to uh, uh, feelings which they other might not be, be aware of. So I think it could be in the right hands an aid to therapy. Not everybody uh, uh, is capable of using cannabis in this way, but it can be used in this way by people who, who make an effort to learn to use it in this way. Obviously, Western society fails to offer guidance on how to use marijuana beneficially. I've seen many people who use marijuana addictively, uh, many people who use it all the time, and I think get very little effect out of it. I see people who smoke it and get groggy and doped out. The real problem is that people do too much. 
they don't understand that the best way to do cannabis is approximately once a week. The desire to have altered states of consciousness is basically healthy and normal. It can have bad expressions. And I think in our culture where there's no recognition of that desire and we don't teach young people how to satisfy it in healthy ways, it's obvious that we're going to see a lot of negative expressions of it. More money has been spent trying to find something wrong with cannabis than any other vegetable material in human history. And what they've come up with is so pathetically thin that I am confident that uh, uh, it amounts to a clean bill of health for this stuff. U.S. government health authorities estimate that there are about 350,000 deaths per year caused by tobacco and around 125,000 from alcohol. This does not include alcohol's involvement in 50% of all road fatalities and 65% of all murders. There are 14 to 27,000 deaths from legal medicines and over a thousand of these have been recorded as overdoses of aspirin. There are around 5,000 deaths from illegal drugs while ailments related to caffeine kill up to 10,000 people per year. But there have been no deaths attributed to marijuana. Cannabis is not a health problem. The problem is that it promotes social values and attitudes which are unwelcome in capitalist market-based society. It's just that simple. A drug like coffee with a horrendous health profile compared to cannabis is completely welcomed into the marketplace and the home and the lifestyle of, uh, of modern people. This is simply that we value certain states of mind and we fear and suspect others. And this is based entirely on value systems that are inculcated uh, from above. Clearly, the discussion as to how society should deal with marijuana is likely to continue for some time. But is marijuana the reason hemp is no longer the major industry it once was? After all, the industrial-grade hemp crop is virtually free